Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur with We Write About Music, and today I'm here with Dylan Baldy of Cloud Nothings. Coming out on February 26th, their next album, The Shadow I Remember, is set for its release. Uh, Dylan, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and being here. No problem, yeah. Thanks for having me. How are you doing? What's going on on uh, your side of the world? I'm doing good. We were talking off camera <laughs> about it. I, just, I just ate a lot of well a big burrito um so i feel full and good good yeah. how are you i'm i'm doing really well uh, as well like i said i'm in los angeles so you know the the weather's pretty nice out nice. It's around 4 30 in the afternoon so dinner's coming up and honestly a burrito sounds pretty good cool <laughs> i like that we both have like the hints of something musical and like you have like the neck of a guitar i have like this oh, microphone yeah. kind of off in the corner yeah. i didn't even realize but yeah yeah we like music yeah uh yeah we do like music and <laughs> that is why we're here um <laughs> well i gotta say that all the singles that you've released so far have been uh got you know they got us pretty excited for the record but even though it was just released this week nothing without you has been incredible i think it might oh, be nice. the best single release so far uh, ahead of the record mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, man. yeah, I like that song. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really good. But I gotta say though, you've made the fans extremely happy in a year of craziness uh, with a pretty pretty aggressive release schedule. At the moment, you're one of Rock's hardest workers. I can only assume that it's attributed to all the downtime. Um, downtime, and also it just suddenly feels more like it's okay to release things um, with maybe less of like a build up to them or something or you can just kind of like have a more uh, uh, like constant schedule of release um, and like creation of things because we've always kind of had a pretty strong mm -hmm. work ethic I guess like I'm always yeah. making always making music always making sure, stuff sure. but it felt like we were kind of tied to this uh, put out an album two or for a year but like there's a cycle that we had to go through mm -hmm. and now and uh, you know partially thanks to the downtime but also just thanks to like people essentially living online um it feels like you can kind of just always be like here's more stuff <laughs> yeah no one ever is no one's ever upset about that yeah. that's true yeah i guess with all the focus of kind of just being at home and you're right everyone's living their life on their phones or computers at the moment mm. why not listen to more music it's available you got to take a break from tv and movies every once in a while so yeah <laughs> yeah and it's <laughs> like it's good yeah you don't have to like right be depressed when you listen to music and like it's not like you know looking at sad news all day you can take a break from it and be like i'll listen to a song yeah. listen to exactly and i kind of feel like the first half of last year was really hard with self-promotion because it's like there's so much else going on but now mm. that you know we're kind of past that and we're you know sort of transitioning to whatever normal is yeah release as much as you can and get it going um i assume everyone has been you know pretty thrilled with what's come out so far yeah, it's a, it's, there's plenty of time for people to listen to music these days. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so something that I really wanted to talk about and kind of how important is, is how Paramount Bandcamp has been in an independent, independent artist's life as of recently. Um, seeing as though the last two albums that you've put out were self-released through there exclusively, how do you kind of come to the conclusion to do so? um it was the simplest way to get everything done quickly okay because we we had enough music for me and our our drummer uh jason he and i are the ones who've been kind of making all this stuff so far um this past year mm -hmm. and this year um but we were just like should we put out a record like we have so much music um <laughs> so it just kind of made sense to get something uh together and Bandcamp was the simplest like most direct route to being like here's this thing we made, you can listen to it, you can buy it, you can do whatever you want, um, but it's on a site that is, it, you know, very supportive of us, like putting it up here. Um, so yeah, Bandcamp has become a very helpful thing in the pandemic time for us. I, I fully agree. And it's been cool with all the Bandcamp Fridays. Um, I mean, we're recording this on a Thursday right now, but tomorrow is Bandcamp Friday, so. It is, yeah. yeah. No, the, the Fridays are nice. Yeah, I always Fridays end up buying a bunch of junk from, or well, not junk, music um, <laughs> from people who, I tend to try to do it just from my friends on those days because sure. there is just so much stuff that people put out on Fridays that it's kind yeah. of overwhelming. Um, so I try to just keep it to like people I know just so I have a stopping totally. point. 
<laughs> now that's a good call. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the shadow I remember is going to be released through car park instead of Bandcamp. Is that correct? True. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, why, uh, why the decision to go that way instead of another Bandcamp release? Um, well, this album got recorded last February, um, oh, right before wow. everything kind of went down. Um, so it's been done for a long time. And we did initially want to get it out last year. Um, but Car Park had already filled up their whole schedule for the year. And rather than try to put it out ourselves or go to another label or something like that, um, Car Park's been good the whole time we've been on them. <laughs> so we were like, <laughs> yeah, awesome. we'll, wait. we'll wait till next year. That's fine. Um, and it turned out to be totally fine. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, seriously. So, yeah. That's really cool, though. So uh, compared to the singles that have been released so far, is, is the album going to have a similar vibe or is there going to be something different, maybe some surprises or something like that? Uh, there's, I feel like there's like our softest song ever. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, we're not known for no. being too soft. Uh, but there is a song on this album called Nara that I think is like kind of just a lighthearted tune. Um, so that might be the biggest surprise for like longtime fans of the band, I guess. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's a varied record. You know, every song is mm -hmm. different. Um, but I don't think there'll be anything truly shocking to anybody who's been following the band. Yeah. Okay. Well, damn, I'm really looking forward to a softer song. I can't even begin to like comprehend what it might sound like, but I'm really excited for it. So yeah, it'll, I mean, it's, it sounds soft. Yeah. It probably doesn't <laughs> even sound soft. It's my version of soft. Compared so, to yeah, what, you know, the, like. yeah, the typical cloud nothing sound is. I get mm -hmm. that. Um, can we expect any more singles to be released before the big day? I, I think this is the end. Yeah. I think nothing okay. without you was the last one. And then the record comes out the 26th right yeah i think we that got you said uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't remember <laughs> okay a few weeks a few weeks three mm -hmm. fridays from now um that's awesome well i mean yeah we're really looking forward to it so we'll definitely keep an eye out uh so yeah so one of the one of the goals of kind of we write about music is to shine the spotlight on emerging artists um, who have either released music for the first time or or uh, very early on in their careers so I kind of want to open up the floor to for you to kind of shout out any, you know, aspiring artists or maybe even some friends of yours who are uh, kind of just starting to make it in the in the music game. Um, well, some people who put out records that I like recently, uh, Yasmeen Williams, have, are you familiar okay. with her? I'm not. Oh, she's um, a really great guitar player um, from, I, I want to say like the DC area, okay. um, but she just put out a record on a label called Spinster Sounds. Um, and it's like an amazing, um, it's not just solo acoustic guitar. There's like some other stuff going on, but in essence, it feels like an acoustic guitar record and it's just like instrumental, um, really, really great uh, mm -hmm. guitar playing. Um, so I've been kind of fascinated with that record lately. Um, who else is new? Uh, I'm trying to think of stuff that came out this year already. I guess. This is tough. I feel like a lot of stuff I've listened to has been older people have been putting out records forever. That's okay though. It's still available for purchase. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah. There's a, there's a rapper I like named, uh, his name is Milo, um, but he has okay. a, several different names that he like raps under. Um, oh. And he put out a record at the beginning of this year under the name Rap Ferreira. Um, and the album is called Bob's Son, I think all right um that record's really good yeah my all this stuff is interesting in different ways i um, mean this one just is continues to be interesting he's not new by any means but the album is new so yeah. okay that qualifies that's a good answer <laughs> that's totally fine um well that's that's really nice to hear sort of like on the other hand though i don't think there should ever be shame in what a person listens to as far as like you know guilty pleasure music but are there bands that you still listen to on a frequent basis that might qualify under that? Um, let me think. You know, I was just talking to somebody about uh, how I had this like overnight change in high school where I swear I used to be like, a, um, I would wear like double XL shirts, like adult double XLs as like a young child. And my parents honestly were like concerned that there weren't like shirts big enough for me after a certain <laughs> point, but they kept buying me these like giant ACDC shirts okay. from, from like, you know, JCPenney or Sears or whatever. Um, just like the 
like normal shirts that had ACDC logos on them because I really liked ACDC. Sure. And then one day, like a switch flipped in my body and I turned into like a really skinny, like tall kid um, and all my ACDC shirts got too big, but I never stopped liking ACDC. <laughs> um, so I would say they're, they're not a guilty pleasure necessarily, but I, I do like that band. Yeah. To this day. I agree. And I'm pretty sure they put out a new album this last year. They did. Yeah. And it, it was pretty it sounds like good. ACDC. It was pretty <laughs> yeah, <it's> good. <laughs> if, if that's There's... what you're looking for, like they definitely scratch the itch of the ACDC uh -huh. sound. Yeah. They're, they're just, you know, they've been doing the same thing for a long time. They're one of those bands, but like, would you, it's like, why would they do something different? Yeah, I don't want them to do something different. Yeah. Right. They're allowed to do the same thing forever. Totally exactly cool. i mean i'm not saying i wouldn't turn down like a jazz based acdc album if they ever you know were bored and feeling it but, <laughs> but if it ain't broke don't fix it i suppose in their case at least mm. <laughs> um yeah so uh kind of moving on from that but you <laughs> you did a reddit ama about six seven months ago um, mm -hmm. which was fantastic overall and a user asked you what you've been reading lately, um, and you gave some really great answers. Since then, has there been anything that you've been reading or that kind of stands out uh, that you'd like to recommend? Hmm. I, I mean, I'm reading stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. I wonder, I don't remember what I was reading six months ago even. Um, Looked like uh, your answer was Animal by Dorothea Lasky. That's a good book. <laughs> I will check it out. Oh, well, what do you know? Um, yeah, the last thing I read, I did just finish like this gigantic book um, called Listening to the Wind. Okay. Um, and it's by a British uh, music journalist named Ian Priest. And it's just like a in-depth, there's like a chapter each devoted to, I think it's maybe 20, 30, uh, like small independent record labels. And that it ranges from like a, there's little tape labels. Um, I think he talks to, I think there's one in LA. Well, he talks to Sean McCann. Do you know him? Sounds familiar, but I don't He's like an LA guy. He runs a label called Recital. Um, oh, okay. So that's, that's an LA connection, just all right. because you're there. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, but he goes, it's all over the world, honestly, sure. from, from that and then up to, I think like Thrill Jockey is maybe like the biggest label he talks to. So it's all pretty like small stuff. Um, and it's really like current labels that are kind of in the last couple of years have been, you know, releasing a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, music that people haven't written about to death, you know, it's like, it's right. like pretty new sounding things. Um, so it's a, it's a great book and he's a really good writer and it's like in-depth interviews with all these people who run the labels and I, nice. I would recommend that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll definitely check it out. I've been looking for something, uh, looking for something to read lately. So I'll take your recommendation. It's a good book. Nice. Um, so I have a feeling that a lot of people who might be watching this, or at least people that necessarily follow us, aren't overly familiar with your music as we kind of cover a wide variety of genres. Where would you recommend that they start if they were, you know, to listen? Hmm. Every record is kind of different. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to say. If they're feeling philanthropic, uh, the album on Bandcamp called Black Hole Understands there goes go. directly to us. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that would be the most financially sound decision they could make. Um, okay, but if they're, more, that one. <laughs> yeah, if they're more interested in just, uh, you know, getting a taste for what the band is like, people do tend to like uh, a record from 2012 called Attack on Memory. That seems to be mm -hmm. a lot of people's favorites and okay. how a lot of people got into the band. So I would say maybe try that one. All right. I think that's I think that's good, but yeah, you know what? If it's going to benefit you guys, I say start with <laughs> start with that and maybe yeah. move backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> there you go. Um, so saying that you know we're in February of 2021 now, it's a brand new year with high hopes. Uh, what are some of your goals, musical or not? Uh well, this year, I, I've been really into running lately. So okay. like, I, or for the last couple of years. Um, and I did, I only got a chance to do one like marathon uh, before things, you know, you can't really do that anymore. Um, so yeah, I did one real life one and it was exhausting, but it was, it felt good <laughs> to like have that and like work up to it and do it. It's nice to have like a tangible goal in that way. So I would like to do that again this year, um, either just on my own or if somehow, you know, the stars align and something good happens in the world, you know, maybe in an actual race. 
Um, do you want to do that? Um, I've been trying to make these. Our drummer and I do like kind of like free jazz, like improv records all wow. the time. So we put out like, uh, we have a third one coming out actually, but we have two already that are just saxophone and drums, uh, like free improv music. So I want to do another one of those and I want to do like a guitar and drums one this year. That's all like remote. Um, so that's kind of a little goal I have. <laughs> I'm not really familiar with that. Is it, is it like, is it widely available or? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's on, I think it's on all the streaming stuff and okay. it's on Bandcamp as well. It was called the Baldy Garish duo. His last name is Garish. Nice. Okay. Definitely um, going to check that out. That sounds yeah, awesome. So it's, uh, it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, it's not like the most listenable music, <laughs> but it's, it's pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I want to do more of that. Um, and then I do want to try to get another Cloud Nothing's Things record together because I think by the time we're allowed to tour again, this record that's coming out at the end of the month is already going to be old. <laughs> so it's going to feel like we should have something new. Yeah. I, you know what? <laughs> no one can complain that you haven't come out with enough over the past year because, I mean, shoot, even in as soon as this album comes out, it'll still be three albums within a year span. I know. Yeah, How are you even going to be able to pick what goes on the set list now that like your discography is so big? I know. That's playing four People hours. Have been asking me that. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to. I mean, like the next time we meet up to practice or something, it's going to be like, should we learn these hundred songs we put out like True. before we while we didn't even see each other? Or should we just pretend it didn't happen and like learn some new songs? So it's going to be really hard to decide. I feel like Yola Tango used to do the thing where they spun a big wheel on stage and like it would land on like tonight we're just playing acoustic covers of like the birds or something and people would be like, <laughs> okay, you know, like I guess that's what we'll watch. So maybe we'll do that. Yeah, we'll bring the wheel out. You know, you should do that because if people, you know, okay, so I think by the end of this year, shows will be back. I'm, I'm pretty confident at that point that- I like your better. attitude. Yeah, there will at least be one show. Tours will kind of resume. I'm a little worried about, you know, once every band is able to tour again, there's just going to be a flood of like a million shows happening, which is fine. But in the case of bringing a wheel out, people will just be so happy. People will be so happy to be at a show that it won't really matter. You could play ABCs, you know, for for two hours and... Yeah, well, that's when we break out the free jazz set. Yeah, that's there our free you jazz go. Like, you oh, should have an intermission. Yeah, yeah, the free jazz intermission. 30 yeah. minute intermission, you're good uh -huh. to go. Sorry, everybody. Yeah, we have to do this now because the wheel said so. Yeah. <laughs> Just throw your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> Just because they paid for the ticket doesn't mean they get, you know, guaranteed cloud nothing songs. So that's fine. <laughs> yeah, they absolutely don't get what they want. Yeah, no. Sorry, everyone. Sorry, you're getting yeah. live music in person. That's it against your will <laughs> <laughs> yeah, against your will, seriously um yeah so uh what was i gonna say so basically yeah you said that you're running when you're not uh when you're not making music what else do you kind of do to like recharge when you're not making music is it has it mainly been like you know the tvs and movies or are you trying to think out of the box at this point um, if I, I live with my partner, um, and she really likes TV. Um, so if she wasn't here, I would probably not be watching TV at all. Um, but we tend to end, you know, every day by just watching some of a show or something. So I do that. We got a dog recently. So oh, nice. Taking care of the dog has been like kind of time consuming, like more than I really expected it to be. Yeah. Um, but she's great. So I, I like having this little dog around. Nice. Um, uh, yeah. What's her name? And what Lapping. breed actually? Um, she, she's a rescue. Um, so we're fostering her for now and we're gonna like attempt to adopt her if they'll let us. Um, we're gonna find out pretty soon actually. Awesome. So that's, that's exciting. Um, but her name is Lavender. She came Cute. with that name. <laughs> um, yeah, and she's a little pit mix, um, but she was, they think she was used as a bait dog um, for like oh. bites. So they found her tied up to a tree in a park near us and she's missing like part of her nose and like lips. Okay. Or I don't know if they're lips on a dog, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so she can't really breathe through her nose. She has no nostrils. Um, so she just makes these cute little sounds all day um, that are just like, it probably is sounds that it means it's hard for her to breathe. But yeah. Cute. <laughs> cute. <laughs> so I kind of like them. So we're taking care of lavender and that's been, that's been nice. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, and yeah, what, what have you been watching? What's on the TV? Uh, we just finished Search Party. 
Okay. Um, which is HBO show that was pretty good. And then we we just restarted because I haven't seen it, but uh, say or Sadie uh, really likes uh, BoJack Horseman. Oh, so I had, good! I had not seen it, so we're about done with the first season of that, and we're working our nice. way through it. Yeah. It's yeah, I'm so about fun. to start it. Yeah, it's really good. It gets uh, pretty depressing as as time goes on. That's what I heard. <laughs> yeah, it's not yeah. a typical animated show for sure, but um, it's yeah. It's I'm not going to spoil anything. It's really good. Just keep keep okay. it up, and it gets way better. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, I want to start wrapping things up, and I just wanted to thank you so much again for for taking the time to speak. Uh, the last thing I'd like to ask you is, is there anything like that you'd like to tell the fans right now who are watching? Maybe like a last message that you'd like to impart on them before uh, before the album comes out? Um, I mean, there's like a core group of people who have, we have a Bandcamp like subscription service thing that right. we did too, um, that we put out music every month for people who subscribe to that. And the people who subscribe to that, I think I... I don't even know how to be grateful enough to them <laughs> for doing that because it's like has, it has truly helped us um, yeah. for this whole year and it's given me like not I'm saying a purpose feels strong but it's nice to have like this thing that every month I like have some you know work that feels like it has a meaning <laughs> to do <laughs> right. like, I have to do this thing to put out here you know it's nice to have that in a time of no touring or anything you know to be able to have that kind of direct interaction with people mm -hmm. still um so i just i would like to say thank you <laughs> to that's anybody awesome. listening as part of that or if you're not too just thanks totally any you know, yeah seriously having any sort of goal at this point or any sort of due date or timeline it just gives uh gives life a little more purpose at the end of the day kind of does yeah because it's yeah. been a long dreary road but yeah i do i do see <laughs> it i think you're right i think things will hopefully come around soon i think so end of the year we'll be rocking out of your shows i will be there really looking forward to it great <laughs> awesome. awesome all right dylan thank you so much again uh have a great rest of your day uh this should be up by tuesday and um yeah we'll get it out as far as we can we really want people to listen to the record and yeah we're just really excited overall cool well thanks so much for having me yeah, yeah. man thank you we'll talk to all you right. soon all right bye all right bye bye